Oh my God. Sent him an email specifically because uh, I didn't want there to be any kind of like heated exchange between us. I mean, he's not the kind of character that would take criticism very well or. You know, I see in the news that the pictures of that father and son that took the seats that we gave up and the kid's the same age as Sean. The father's around my age and we have pictures that are eerily similar of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. You know, and I, I look at the news and I go, that could be us. That could be a picture of us. The other thing you wrote to him in that email, you said, imagine the project is self-funded and on your own schedule. Would you consider taking dozens of other people to the Titanic before you truly knew the source of those sounds? I think Stockton was designing a mousetrap for billionaires. Yes, Stockton Rush was creating a mousetrap for billionaires, and he even made them pay for it. Hi, guys. I have to say, wow. Like I said in my last video about the Titan disaster, I am stunned and shocked by what I am finding while I'm researching for this video. So for this video again, same like with last video, more and more is coming out about Stockton Rush and his business practices. So friends have spoken out, but also clients that he tried to lure in. So let's dive deeper. I know this is going to be a long one again, guys, but stay with me. I really think it's worth it. Let's have a closer look of what a friend of Stockton Rush revealed in an interview. And it's mind blowing to me again and again, how ignorant and fraudulent Stockton Rush operated his company Ocean Gate. I'd like to be remembered as an innovator. Um, I think it was General MacArthur said, you're remembered for the rules you break. And, you know, I've broken some rules to make this. I think I've broken them with, with logic and good engineering behind me, the carbon fiber and titanium. There's a rule you don't do that. Well, I did. This friend claims that Stockton Rush knew that he would die in his submersible. He quite literally and figuratively went out with the biggest bang in human history that you could go out with. And who was the last person to murder two billionaires at once and have them pay for the privilege? The only question is when. He was risking his life and his customers' lives to go down in history. He's more famous now than anything else he would have ever done. So we're not talking about that Stockton Rush knew while he was in the subway shortly before the implosion. We're talking about he knew way before how he would end up because he knew this sub was not classified and never would be. He knew this was experimental, how he called it, meaning this is not material that you use for submarines. In my last video, I showed you all about the lies and the tricks that Stockton Rush used to strip paying passengers of their legal rights and avoid having his sub certified and tested. So you already know how bad it was, but it seems it can get worse. Because if Rush knew he would die in the sub, he fully knew he would take others with him not only take a risk and hope for the best. No, it seems he wanted to go out with a bang and be forever linked to the Titanic. That is my opinion. I want to show you what his friend said about him, but I also want to show you his tactics, how he tried to lure people into paying and taking part in that dive. So this alone, is would be the topic of a whole video how he manipulated people to become paying customers trip citing scheduling conflicts and reservations of his own he told me he's now grappling with the emotions of that fateful decision that kept his family safe but left others without a father and a son of their own Ch he was heavily going after people it seems the crowds were not standing in line waiting to go on the sub. So later we will also look at what another almost wicked him has to say about Rush, how he tried to persuade him and his son to take their place in the sub. Those places that were later taken by the two victims, the father and the son, Suleiman, who died 
in the Titan. So, so let's talk about the friend. His name is Carl Stanley. He runs a deep sea exploration company in Honduras, and he has been friends with Rush for a long time. Stanley is a submarine expert who organizes deep diving underwater trips via a submarine in the Caribbean. He built his first deep diving submersible at the age of 15. He also designed it himself, so that's quite impressive. At 24, Stanley started taking expeditions down to 700 feet in Honduras. He is definitely a submarine expert and he has gathered more than 3,000 hours of piloting experience in deep diving submersibles. His deep sea dives have ranged from 500 feet to 2,660 feet in depth and from a few to nearly 17 hours in duration. Carl Stanley's underwater adventures have also been documented in a documentary called A View From Below, just in case that you're interested and want to watch that. He is also a member of the Deep Submersible Pilots Association. So in my opinion, Carl Stanley is definitely qualified to speak out and give a warning to Stockton Rush. And Stockton should have taken those warnings very, very seriously. But what did Stockton Rush do? He has praised his submersible for years. Back in 2017, he said that his sub was almost invulnerable. Later in 2021, he admitted in an interview that he broke some rules to build the watercraft, but this was no sign of admitting any flaws of the sub. It was him displaying his ignorance of proper testing and certification. It was him believing his sub is above it all and all dire warnings he received over the years were considered holding back innovation. Carr Stanley said a lot of things about Stockton Rush that demonstrate Rush's ignorance of safety protocols and also show his character. Carr Stanley said about Stockton Rush that Stockton was not someone who would take criticism positively. So what happened between the two? When Carl Stanley was aboard the Titan for an undersea excursion off the coast of the Bahamas in April 2019, he felt that there is something wrong with the vessel when loud noises were heard. So the day after this trip, Stanley sent an email to Stockton Rush sounding the alarm on suspected defects. He didn't want to call him or do this personally because of Stockton's temper. So he wrote this email and he said, for example, what we heard in my opinion sounded like a flaw or defect in one area being acted on by the tremendous pressures and being crushed or damaged. From the intensity of the sounds, the fact that they never totally stopped at depth and the fact that there were sounds at about 300 feet that indicated a relaxing of stored energy would indicate that there is an area of the hull that is breaking down and getting spongy. Stanley was very concerned about Stockton taking down paying passengers with the sub being that unstable and making those noises. So he also addressed that in his email. He wrote to Stockton, a useful thought exercise here would be to imagine the removal of the variables of the investors, the eager mission scientists, your team hungry for success, the press releases already announcing the summer's dive schedule. Imagine this project was self-funded and on your own schedule. Would you consider taking dozens of other people to the Titanic before you truly knew the source of those sounds? Carl Stanley never received an answer from Stockton Rush. Carl Stanley was asked by a reporter whether he thinks that Stockton Rush had a death wish. And he answered. He definitely knew it was going to end like this. Um, he quite literally and figuratively went out with the biggest bang in human history that you could go out with. And who was the last person to murder two billionaires at once and have them pay for the privilege? 
Carl Stanley went as far as saying Rush intentionally murdered the passengers. So guys, what do you think? Do you think that that was a suicide mission? I don't think so, but you know, it's pretty hard when you consider that Stockton Rush was married and his wife even worked for Ocean Gate. So how can you do this to your family, to your wife? Having them sit on shore and you go down there and you take that risk, ignore all the warnings, so many warnings. It's all in my last video, you've probably seen it. And then go down there and not care about anyone, not about your wife, not about your own life, but most importantly, not about the passengers' lives that are paying for this, that are trusting you. And that's the next I want to report about, how he lured these passengers into diving with him. And there's a father and a, a son that Stockton Rush tried to get on the Titanic trip that ended in a deadly disaster. So luckily, they denied the trip, but they would have taken the place of the Suleimans, father and son Suleiman. So I want to show you what these guys said, and they're also revealing very interesting text messages between them and Stockton Rush, how Stockton tried to convince them to buy the trip, even giving them a discount. So who am I talking about? Las Vegas financier Jay Bloom has revealed that he turned down cut price tickets for him and his son on the Titan submersible after he has been texting with Ocean Gate CEO Stockton Rush about safety concerns. Jay Bloom and his son were worried about the Titan's ability to travel that deep into the ocean. So the Titanic is about 12,500 feet below sea level. This is really deep. So concerned are justified. So they said, we saw a lot of red flags after they were shown a video of Rush walking through the submersible and its features. And I want to show this to you guys. Stockton Rush even flew out to Las Vegas to try and get Jay to buy the tickets. They said, Jay noted that Rush flew in on a two-seater experimental plane that he built. So yes, he seemed to be kind of crazy and maybe he needed the adrenaline or he was a junkie for that, which is all fine. We need innovation and we need to take risks for innovation. That has been like this in history, but do not fool innocent people in it and don't use tricks. So... Let's have a look what Jay posted on Facebook. It's really interesting. And then we'll have a closer look at the text messages between him and Stockton Rush. Jay Bloom posted this on Facebook. I will want to read it to you. So I decided to share some of my texts with Stockton Rush, the CEO and founder of OceanGate, the company that built and operated the sub Titan that we have all been following this last week. In February, Stockton asked me and my son, Sean, to go with him on the dive to Titanic in May. Both May dives were postponed due to weather and the dive got delayed until June 18th, the date of this trip. I expressed safety concerns and Stockton told me, while there's obviously risk, it's way safer than flying in a helicopter or even scuba diving. There hasn't been even an injury in 35 years in a non-military subs. Well, there hasn't, that's my comment, because they have been tested and certified. Let's continue. I am sure he really believed what he was saying, but he was very wrong. He passionately believed in what he was doing. The last time I saw Stockton in person was March 1st. He took me through the Titanic exhibit at Luxor. Then at lunch in the Luxor food court, we talked about the dive, including safety. He was absolutely convinced that it was safer than crossing the street. He gave me a book of photos, one of 324 produced, signed by him and Paul-Henri Narjolet, two of the five on board the sub. 
I told him that due to scheduling, we couldn't go until next year. Our seats went to Shahzada Dawood and his 19-year-old son, Suleiman Dawood, two of the other three who lost their lives on this excursion. The fifth one is Hamish Harding. One last time, rest in peace, Stockton and crew. As for Sean and I, after this got on the heels last week of losing Treat Williams, another friend of 25 years and former business partner, we're going to take a minute to stop and smell the roses. Tomorrow is never promised. Make the most of today. So here you can see the text messages. I only read the ones that I find interesting. Um, have a look at Monday, April 24th at 7 a.m. Stockton Rush is texting have space on mission one may 11 till 19th and two may 20th till 28th last minute price is 150k pp so it's great you get a hundred thousand dollar discount for dying i'm sorry that i have to say it like this but that's what it is right do you have a death wish you want to go into an unclassified uncertified sub with tons of problems thousands of warnings it's only 150,000 great j blue answers i'll check my schedule and see if i can make it work so 3 days later stockton is pressing he's asking any luck so that's an interesting chat here between j bloom and stockton rush so he keeps texting Jay Bloom and says, I am meeting this afternoon with a couple interested in mission two. Any progress on joining us this year and likely dates? So Bloom answers, my son's friend researched what could go wrong and put a little scare in him. I'm trying to talk him down. He's excited to go, but concerned about the danger. And then Stockton Rush answered, I am happy to have a video call with him, curious what the uninformed would say the danger is and whether it's real or imagined. Oh my God, that's my comment. J. Bloom answers, he researched the marine life at that depth and perceived threats to the vessel. A sperm whale attacks the sap or a giant squid grabs it and compromises the hull. Really stupid stuff. Well, unfortunately for that crappy sub, it didn't need a giant squid to compromise the hull. It just imploded by itself, sadly. So Stockton Rush answers, yeah, very stupid. The pressure is over 100 million pounds. No sperm whale or squid is ever going to be able to mess with the sub. While there's obviously risk, it's way safer than flying in a helicopter or even scuba diving. There hasn't been even an injury in 35 years in a non-military sub. I'll send an email with what happened when a swordfish attacked Alvin. And that was February 3rd. On February 5th, he keeps nagging Jay Bloom again, like any progress for your interest. Deepest depth for sperm whale is less than 3000 meters and we are larger than its mouth can open. And he sends him a link. So Jay Bloom answers, not yet. I'm really not concerned about getting eaten by a whale. I'll set up a Skype call to answer questions. And then Rush keeps texting again. Filling up this year and next, want to reserve a spot or spots? J. Bloom answers, still waiting to see how this year plays out closer to the date, if not this year, next year. So Stockton answers, okay, the May dates will be the last to fill, so could be last minute space this year. J. Bloom says, okay, keep me posted. And Stockton Rush replies, things going well, Titanic weather looking good for next cycle, May 20 to 28th two spits on that and may 29th till june 7th so that was may 15th so he kept texting for month so it seems he didn't find anybody else to fill these seats the businessman jay also said that rush has a different risk appetite than i do both Jay and his son said Rush brushed off questions and concerns they had about the sub. I had before getting on was literally about the structural integrity of the submarine. Um, 
before we got on, I saw a video of uh, Stockton explaining how the submarine worked with the with the remote and everything like that. And I saw a lot of red flags with it, and it was only meant for five people. And um, I just didn't think that it could survive, you know, going that low into the ocean. So uh, ultimately, I ended up warning my dad about it, and he ended up agreeing with me. And when we tried to ask Stockton questions, he kind of a, uh, you know, brush it off a little bit. So. Um, kind of red flags from the start. Stockton, you know, I think his, his heart was in the right place and he, he really was passionate about his project and he believed everything he was saying. But uh, one of the things that concerned me was he told me he was flying in to see me and he was landing at North Las Vegas Airport, which is a, an odd selection. Most people that come in privately come into either McCarran, which is now Harry Reid International, or they come into Henderson Executive. And uh, I asked him why and he said he was coming in on a a two-seater experimental plane that he built. And I started to think about, he's coming in on a two-seater experimental plane to pitch me out to go on a five-seater experimental sub that he built down to the ocean floor to see the Titanic. And it was just, it was, it was uh, he has a different risk appetite than I do. Um, I'm a pilot, I have my helicopter pilot's license. I wouldn't get into an experimental aircraft. And I also want you to see this interview, what they said about the Sulemans. He told me he's now grappling with the emotions of that fateful decision that kept his family safe, but left others without a father and a son of their own. What's going through your mind when you think about everything that's happened and knowing that you and your own child could have been on that sub? You know, I'll, I'll tell you what, what's going through my mind. It's, um, it's kind of surreal. Like, this has been a, a, an enormous news story, and it's everywhere you look. And every time I see a picture of the people that lost their lives on this tragic event, uh, I look at that picture of the father and son who replaced my son and myself and think just how easily, but for the grace of God, that could have been our picture on the news. So it, it's really sobering. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, th this happened on Father's Day. Jay, uh, last Sunday, you talk about it, it was you and your son could have been on the Titan. Instead, you were replaced by another father and another son. How much have you had to wrestle with that over the last week? It's, um, yeah, it gives you a lot to think about. Um, uh, the, the fact that there's another, another father and son that took uh, my son's spot and my spot is, um, is very, very disturbing. And I can't get away from it because everywhere, every news station I turn on, or even social media news, and it's everywhere. And I see pictures of this father and son and think how easily that could have been my son and myself. You know, you shared some of the text messages, Jay, between yourself and, and Stockton Rush. Um, and there were, it, it seems like there was a bit of a, a courtship going on, uh, him asking you continually, or at least over the course of several months, whether or not you wanted to go on that sub. Looking back, I, I, with everything that you knew then and experienced then and everything that we've seen and know now, I'm wondering what the red flags are now that you can sit back uh, with, with the time that you've had and everything that you know. Were there any red flags and what, what might they have been? So, um, yes, there were definitely red flags that, that surfaced. Uh, you know, when, when Stockton first uh, approached me with the idea, it sounded very, very sexy and very exciting. and. Uh, you know, a real bucket list kind of item. Uh, my son was a big uh, Titanic aficionado. My son is a big fan of the Titanic, so I thought it'd be great for us to do uh, something together. And you just, uh, the allure of the proposition was just so compelling that you just kind of take for granted that everything has um, uh, been reviewed and checked out. And uh, my son talked to his friend and, and the two of them came back and voiced some concerns. They were concerned about the, the vessel. They were concerned about the marine life that we're going to encounter. Uh, they were concerned about uh, some of the uh, materials that were used in the construction of the hull. They were concerned about um, uh, the, a consumer-grade uh, game system control st controller yeah. being used for this commercial application. Um, and they, they voiced their concerns. I relayed the concerns to Stockton, and as I learned more, I, I grew more concerned myself. Uh, Stockton, what were, the, what were those concerns? The text as you, messages. Yeah, what, what were those concerns as you learned more, Jay? Well, things like uh, uh, I, the, the concerns that, that arose were uh, things like uh, consumer grade uh, equipment and off the shelf 
stuff from the garden center and Home Depot being used for commercial application, and not just a commercial application, but a commercial application in one of the harshest environments on the planet. You know, it, it was it was very concerning. And then the more I learned, I, f I found out you can't open the sub hatch from the inside. It's bolted right. on by 18 bolts on the outside. So even if there was an emergency and you surfaced, you can still suffocate inside the sub on the surface. There's, there's a lot going on. So guys, I find this so sad because it was completely unnecessary to lose all these lives and to lose four innocent lives in the Titan submersible. I don't know how you see it, but the more I dig in, the more videos I create about the Titan disaster, the less respect I have for Stockton Rush and the more disgusted I am. So if you haven't seen it yet, check out my other video about Stockton Rush. It's worth it. Uh, link is in the description. It's in the end screen. And if you like this video, please support my channel and subscribe. That would be so awesome because I want to see you again in my next video. It's already in the works, but it's probably taking a few days. So thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.